The motor will be adapted from an 80mm fan normally used in PCs. Make a mark on each of the four arms joining the motor to its frame at 25mm from the centre line. Cut through the arms at the marked points. Remove the fan blades completely. The rotating hub must have a diameter of between 35 and 36mm. Remove all burrs and smooth down. The aim is to obtain a perfectly cylindrical rotor. Take care to vacuum away all debris and dust. Nice work, the motor is now ready for use. For winding the transformer secondary, get yourself some double-sided tape that's strong, but as thin as possible. Wind a strip of double-sided tape around the rotor. Cut the excess tape off level by running a sharp knife flat across the top surface of the rotor. Remove the second backing film from the tape. Make a right angle bend of about 5 cm, that's 2 inches, from one end and then stick this angle at the top of the rotor. The winding direction, clockwise or anti-clockwise, is unimportant. Continue winding the other turns, touching each other all the way into the bottom of the edge of the rotor. Ideally, you want to wind 25 turns, but if you're one or two short, this won't be a problem. The final turn of this first layer is also the most tricky, as it will try to get away and take the others with it. A layer of superglue will keep it in place once and for all. Now let's start the second layer of the secondary. Apply a strip of double-sided tape around the first layer of the winding. Remove the backing film and continue winding the turns on, keeping them tightly side by side in the same clockwise or anti-clockwise direction as before, but this time working upwards from the bottom edge of the rotor. The second layer will have around 24 turns. You will then need to repeat previous steps in order to end up with a total of four layers. The third and fourth layers will consist of 23 and 22 turns respectively for reasons explained in part two of the magazine article. The last layer ends at the top of the rotor. Cut your wire off at around 5 cm, that's 2 inches, then twist the two ends together for a few turns to hold them. Finally, fix the whole winding with a good amount of cyanoacrylate glue at various locations across the surface of the final layer. The secondary is finished. Before winding the primary, you need to create a gap between the two windings. 
Cut out a strip of cardboard long enough to go just around the winding. Wind this cardboard strip around the secondary and keep it in place with a piece of single-sided scotch tape. Apply one turn of double-sided tape to your cardboard strip, fitted level with the top of the rotor. The winding of the primary starts once again using 0.56mm, that's 24AWG, enameled copper wire. You'll need a little bit greater length, so allow 15 meters, so as to avoid being short. The direction of the winding with respect to the secondary is unimportant. You can use whichever direction you prefer. Start winding regularly near the top edge of the strip of cardboard, proceeding towards the bottom edge to produce around 26 closely packed turns. Next, apply a strip of double-sided tape over this first layer then continue winding in the same direction, but this time from bottom to top, to form the second layer of 25 turns. When you get back to the start position, first glue and then apply one turn of double-sided tape. Bend your wire back on itself for about 5 centimeters, that's 2 inches. This creates the transformer center tap. Let's now wind the third layer towards the bottom, around 26 turns. Then let's add a layer of double-sided tape before winding the final layer upwards, which will be around 25 turns. Hang in there, it's almost over. Cut the wire off at about five centimeters, that's two inches, from the end of the last turn. A good amount of cyanoacrylate or superglue will hold the winding in place, especially that wayward last turn. To keep them in place, twist the input lead to the first layer and the output lead from the final layer together for two or three turns. Once the glue is well set, you can carefully slide the primary off the secondary. Here it is. All that's left for you to do now is carefully remove the strip of cardboard and the first strip of double-sided tape, which no longer serve any purpose. Check that the motor turns freely without rubbing. Detailed information on how to insert the motor secondary assembly into the base unit can be found in the assembly manual you can download free of charge. There you will also find information on mounting the transformer primary and the final step in the assembly which consists in gluing the propeller onto the motor.